Breast cancer is the most common form of cancer for women and the second most common cause of death for women in the UK, killing 11,000. 500 women each year. This month alone, 5,000 women will be diagnosed. It will directly affect one in eight women in their lifetime and touches the lives of nearly all of that. So whether that be going through it or seeing a loved one do so, as today's panel proves. Now, Linda, your sister was diagnosed in uh, 2015. Gloria, you tragically lost your daughter Karen to breast cancer. And Carol, you were diagnosed in 2015. 14. Mm. Um, what was it like that moment when you were told you had breast cancer? I don't know, it's difficult because um, I do, I remember the appointment and I remember talking to the consultant, but I don't really remember what but he said. But why did you go? Did you find a lump in I your found head? a lump, yeah. I was on holiday and, you know, I regularly checked myself all the time for years and years and years. And, and um, I was in Thailand and, and I suddenly felt... And it was a lump that came felt like from nowhere. Mm. I'm pretty sure three or four months before it wasn't there. It might have been, but maybe I just missed it. Mm. And it was quite big. And I didn't say anything to Mark at the time and just carried on with the holiday. I thought, well, I don't want to ruin it. And uh, as soon as I got back, I went to the doctors and I was diagnosed and, and tested and everything quite quickly. And when I went back to the consultant, I didn't... I said to Mark, I don't want you to come with me. I'll go on my own. And he just said, OK. And he was, I could see he was a little bit crestfallen. But I just thought, I need to deal with this. Because in a way, in my head, I kind of knew it was going to be cancer. And when, when he spoke to me about it, it's a, it's a really strange thing, because you can't remember what they say. Yeah. All you can hear is That's why you cancer. need someone with you. Well, no, I don't know. It, it was... I mean, it was just odd. It's a I shock, wasn't, anyway. It's yeah. a bit of a shock, but I, at the same time, I wasn't surprised. So it wasn't that much of a shock. And I just thought, right, OK, let's, gotta, let's get on with this. Let's, let's deal with it. Let's find out what I can do and yeah. what can be done and everything else. And then I met Mark afterwards and I went, yep, it's cancer. And we went to the pub. And that was that. <laughs> and then, you know, we just carried on. And, and it, honestly, life changed from that moment onwards. Mm -hmm. and it has to. It has to. Yeah. You, you become... You get a new yeah. normal. That, that's your life. You know, well, the... I want to say, I actually feel very proud to be sitting beside Carol. Oh, I, 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 no, I do. I'll tell you why. No, I'll tell you why. You're a, a, an example of somebody who fought it in a very stoic way. You wanted to do it by yourself. And, yeah. and, you know, um, I sadly lost my gorgeous girl 14 years ago. Yeah. And I just want to say to people that everything has improved so much since Karen died. Yeah, And, has. you know, she fought her cancer for seven years, fought it privately, um, didn't want people to know. Um, she didn't want to be thought of as a victim. That was mm. her word, not mine. Didn't want people saying, there, there, are you all right? And, no, um, I didn't tell and so. What I wanted to say to you in a reassuring way, really, is like only last week, for example, I was in Northern Ireland and opening a cancer centre, and they have a 3D scanning machine now, and it's the first in the UK. Uh, apparently, the rest are 2D. So the machinery is improving all the time, mm. the drugs are improving all the time, and, yes, it's still a swine of a disease, yeah. but... It, you know, again, more and more people, people are like surviving, you, yeah. Yes, surviving, yeah. surviving well, yeah. so well done you. Yeah. Your, your mum died of breast cancer. She your did. daughter died of breast cancer. Linda, your sister's had breast cancer. You, you touched on the fact that, obviously, Carol, you cope with it in your, in your own individual yeah. way. But, obviously, it's incredibly difficult for loved ones surrounded, surrounding someone with cancer. It is, yeah. And we're convinced that um, my sister's husband, Serge, who was 55 years old, dropped dead. He had a heart attack in front of her. And she was absolutely devastated because they'd been together since they were 13 years old. Mm. And we're convinced probably about nine months to a year later, um, she, had a, she had a lump in her breast. She'd already had cysts removed mm. over, like in a few years before. And she was going off to... We kept saying to her, go and get it checked. And she was in too much of a state of a surge mm. to go and get it checked. That wasn't her priority. Anyway, eventually she went with her daughter, Anika, and we were all waiting for the phone call for her to ring us to say, like, how, how she got on. And then she rang to say, good news, open the champagne, it's only a cyst. And then half an hour later, she rang back to say, no, hold on, they've found something else behind the cyst. Mm. So there was no champagne open. But she, um, she was the same, really. She, I mean, I don't think 
she was going through as much pain. It was more painful the thought of losing her husband than the breast cancer. Yeah. And I do think she would have coped with it better if Serge had have been there with yeah. her to help her through. But Although it, she it had all of her family around. Yeah. Yeah, but see, you raise a very you use family there quite a lot, and it's a really important issue about the people around yeah. you, because of course it's most difficult for the person in the middle of it, but it's devastating for the family also because you're watching, watching. I mean, Karen was only in her thirties and when she got breast cancer. Now, I'd, I'm sure there were many young girls who had it. I, n I didn't know of any young girl in the 30s. And so, therefore, it became, I mean, horrendous as a parent. And yeah. I used to wake up every hour of the night thinking, what will happen and how long and everything. And then one day, I thought to myself, you know, I could be under the bus before anything happens to mm. her. So I had to do a head job on yeah. myself to say, stop it. Because something, and you might agree with it, something happens to people who are dealing with cancer. They seem to get an extra layer of an bravery. Inner strength. Or yeah. a strength that mm. really the family don't have, because mm. you're just too worried watching. Yeah, you, you know? do. You do find yourself like reflecting, you know, this sort of um, confidence and strength mm. to everybody else because they don't know how to behave. Yeah, no. And it's difficult when you, you think you might lose a family member. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and people start avoiding you as well because they don't know what to say. Well, they do, yeah. Well, well I never uh, thought for one second that I was going to, to die from it, but I, I'm sure other people did. Well, we, well, did that's what we, we asked Mark, uh, your lovely Mark, yeah, what, what he was going through while you were going through this, and this is what he says. Uh, before Carol, I'd never really known anyone who'd had cancer, so although I don't think I showed it, I was scared. It was strange, because Carol never was, which made me even more determined to hide it. The worst thing about it was seeing her lose herself and her confidence, but I did my best to boost it when I could. It wasn't all bad, though. We came out of it knowing that if we could get through that, we could get through anything. Oh. Yeah, I love it. It gives me goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bless you. I tell you, he was... He really was a tower of strength. He, you know, he used to make me laugh, he used to mm. make me feel better, he used to tell me all the time that he still fancied me and everything, even though I'd no hair. <laughs> and, you know, it was, he, he was just incredible. Yeah. I mean, he, he was such a diamond. And I, yeah. I, if, I didn't, if I hadn't have had him and I'd had to go through it on my own, because everybody yeah. else still has to go to work and everything else, mm. and he, he went to work, but I knew he was coming home. I, I don't know. Maybe I would have dealt in it, dealt with it yeah. in a different way. Much, much more mm. would have been dif more difficult, I think. And Gloria, you said obviously when Karen was poorly, you didn't know of anyone in their thirties who was I going didn't. through something like this. I actually was on the phone yesterday to a lovely, lovely lady that I know called uh, Helen. Hi, Helen. Uh, Helen is uh, thirty-nine and has very aggressive breast cancer. And uh, she actually writes a really amazing blog. If you ever want to have a look at it, uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it because it's it's. It's slightly sweary, but in a really good way. <laughs> um, basically, Helen has, has written about... Uh, <laughs> I, I can say it, apparently. I can't find it on here now. What's it called? Titty Gritty. It's called Titty <laughs> Gritty. <laughs> it's basically what not to say to people yes. when, when mm. you know, uh, when someone tells you that they've got cancer. Um, It'll be all right. Uh, my friend had cancer. She also puts in her blog, my friend had cancer and they died. Why would you say that to someone? Uh, you're so positive, <coughs> forward slash brave. Um, this one, doing the sympathetic head tilt. Is that something you know all about? I oh. do, yeah. It's the reason I didn't tell a lot of people, because I, I didn't want that kind of sympathy look. I used, oh. I used to call it the cancer face. <laughs> yeah. How long have you got? Oh, my God. And, oh, your hair will grow back. Oh, people do say that all the time. Well, of course it's going to grow back, because hair grows. But at the same time, I know, yeah. you know, people don't need to tell you. What, what should you say? What should you say? That's what you all should right. do. What How should you? How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. all right? Oh, it's nice to see you. Yeah. You know, be normal. Be normal. People yeah. with cancer are still, still people. people. You know, they're not all victims or, or invalids. That You know, they still have feelings and yeah. they still can talk normal stuff. And so. have a laugh.